So I'm going to start LinkedIn. Hello, LinkedIn. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Welcome to episode number 25. It is Coffee is for Closers. And I hope you all had a merry, merry Christmas and Christmaka and anything else that you guys celebrate. What Hanukkah. do other Hanukkah? I'm Hanukkah. Christmaka. I call it Christmaka. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. So what else? I think so. Yeah. Just a happy holidays to everybody. Happy holidays to everybody. So, and um, some Emerson. Some people just celebrate having a day off. Yes, <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> a day off on a Monday. Yeah. But um, I just want to say thank you so much for being here today with us. And, you know, we've been doing this for 25 weeks, and this is the last week before the new year. And I think today's topic is a very, very important topic for all of you entrepreneurs out there, business owners, and especially for those of you selling your high-ticket offers because um, – I'm all about those, and so is Emerson. Yes. We like to sell high-priced stuff. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, and yes, all the hearts out there, thank you. So, okay, uh, today I'm going to do a giveaway because Ooh. I got a lot of requests for this hat. Nice. Do you want to wear the hat today? I will wear that hat. Okay, Emerson's going to wear the hat today. <laughs> so the rules for the giveaway go like this. <laughs> he needs to fix his hair. You need to uh, like this show, like give it a thumbs up for today. Share it on my Facebook page. So head on over to the Pitch Queen Facebook page. That's the Pitch Queen. And then also comment below about what are one or two of your goals for 2018 because that's what we're going to discuss today. Okay? So those are the rules. And uh, if you guys have questions, please put them in the comments below. So again, questions go in the comments below for myself and for Emerson today, and I will let him tell you who he is, what he does, and why he's here today. Emerson. Hello. Who are you? My name is Emerson Brooks. And what do you do? I am an entrepreneur as well, and I work in sales of high-value items. Okay. And what do you sell mostly? I sell services. Okay, sell services. <laughs> Production services. Production I work in the services. entertainment industry. Entertainment mm -hmm. industry. And if you want to go deep into Emerson's um, uh, past and history, you can hear all about it on episode number 11 on Success Unfiltered. Do you want to post in the comments that link? We'll put it in the comments on Instagram so you guys can see it. Amy, I know you're on there too on Facebook, so it'll go on Instagram and I'll go on Facebook in the comments below. Uh, goals, stay focused and continue to learn. Love it. Okay, more goals and uh, we got the contest up. So let's get into today's content. Uh, do you want to say anything else? Why are you here? I'm here to support you. I'm uh, here to support your listeners and um, maybe add a little color and experience um, to some of the things you're talking about. Yes. So um, you guys will get a different perspective other than me today because we have a very special guest here, which I am very happy he's here today. I've been talking about having him come on Coffee is for Closers for a very long time. So again, this is Coffee is for Closers. So if you have your water or your coffee or your tea or your smoothie, uh, feel free to drink up, stay hydrated or caffeinated, whichever you prefer. Emerson, you like the movie too, right? Coffee you is for Closers. Oh, yeah. Glengarry Ginn Ross. Absolute <laughs> classic. And I always Mammoth. like to say, like, it's always about serving people. I know they talk a lot about the ABCs, and I like to call it the ABSC. Always be serving to close people. Yes. <laughs> if you service your customers well, you will close more customers. Yes. So we are going to talk about that. We also got a facelift, you guys. So thank you so much to Katie. But... We got a facelift. Do, how do we look, Eversid? Do we look good? Uh, about 20 years younger. 20 years younger, yeah. Which would make us three years old. Three years old. Well, my friend Indira could hook us up. We can get <laughs> facelifts and lots of Botox and injections. We'd fit at, right in in Beverly we, Hills. We would fit right in in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Maybe right. we should go there. We are going to go car shopping, you guys, and I can't wait to do this. But for all of the ladies out there that hate buying a car... 
we're going to help you save $2,000 on buying a future vehicle. <laughs> At least. We're going to put At together least. a program yes. to help you cut through the red tape and all the part of my French BS that salespeople throw at you, which they rightfully should to try to increase their you know, sales margins, but we're going to help you cut their margins so you can keep a little more money in your pocket. Your pocket. So this is in the works and will be out shortly. So anyway, today is coffee. Let's go back to why we're all here today, right? We're, back. we're, we're Let's going go. back. This is episode number 25, why and how to grow business and sales revenues. And you might think like, duh, well, why not? And a lot of people that I encounter um, with people that reach out to me one-on-one -on -one and other things, like they all start businesses, but then they're still just making like 30 and 40 grand a year. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that, then you might as well what I have, what I call have a J-O-B, a job. And, you know, I had one of those jobs for three years out of college. I was a financial analyst and sat in a cubicle and um, Emerson had a J-O-B too. I was an aerospace engineer and <laughs> sat in an office with two cubicles in it. <laughs> nice. He, he had an upgraded yeah, it situation. <laughs> it was fancy. And we had our 401ks and we had our health insurance Very and all the other. And, um, you know, it just gets boring after a while. So mm -hmm. anyway, we're on the road in entrepreneurship land, like a lot of you. And you might be wondering why and how to grow your business and sales revenues. So that is what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. And today's uh, topics are your cup of wisdom. We always have a cup of wisdom on Coffee is for Closers. Okay? Absolutely. Right next to the whiskey. Yes, right next to the whiskey. And how to make your business hotter. Sweeten up your sales and top line revenues. Perk up growth in business. Perk up growth in revenue. Those are two different things. And energy for your soul. We always end it with some energy for your soul. It's usually a really good quote. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about, um, I love this quote I found uh, from Napoleon Hill. And my good friend, Sean Croxton, who you guys all hear about all the time, on the Quote of the Day show, has Napoleon Hill on at least once a month. So if you need to get acquainted with him, you can go and listen to him over there. But strength and growth come only through continuous effort and struggle. What do you think about that? Well, aside from agreeing with it 100%, yes. <laughs> strength and growth come through continuous effort and struggle. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's just like anything else in life. Like, how do you make iron into steel? You, you forge it. You, 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 make, you make it harder. That, that takes the strength and the growth and, and all, all that comes through the struggle of, of forging the iron. That probably didn't make a lot of sense, so I apologize about that. But you could say it like looking at a diamond. I know it's yeah. a used up metaphor, but the, the pressure and the, the forces upon it make it the valuable object that it is. And we have the our same diamond thing, today. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big it's diamond. A big diamond. <laughs> you guys, Lucky look, girl. I just got engaged. Yeah. Do you like my diamond? <laughs> So, I mean, just like anything else, you, you have to, if you're going to grow, if you're going to become stronger, you have to be comfortable and not only comfortable, look forward to the, the effort and the struggle that you're going to go through. You can't see the effort you're going to have to put out and the struggle you're going to, to get just from life pushing back on you because if it was easy, everyone would do it as something to look forward to. Because yeah. if you're pushing through and it's hard and you're struggling, but you're slowly making strides, that means you're on your way to success. So... You know, uh, per that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank See, this is why Emerson's here today. Okay. Real quick. If you're all on LinkedIn, make sure to hop on over to the pitch queen Facebook page to get the full show because you guys are out of time. See you LinkedIn. See you LinkedIn. LinkedIn needs to get it together because they're only there for like nine, 10 minutes and then it's done. Ain't enough. So. Uh, all right, so if you're here with us, hello again. If you just joined, um, this is Coffee is for Closers. We are talking about business growth and revenue growth and what is the difference and also what are you going to do with your business in 2018. And we wanted to wish you all a happy holidays and hopefully you had a very, very Merry Christmas yesterday or Christmaka, like me. <laughs> I had a day off where I ate a lot of food. Or ate a lot of food. I ate a lot of desserts. I would say I am over 
uh, I have a lot of sugar in my system. I did go to the gym today, so I got a lot of it out. But uh, anyway, let's carry on. So why should you make your business hot? Okay, so this is now the why, and then we're going to get into the how. So you want to respond to market demand. You It allows you to stay hip and current with the trends, right? Like businesses change all the time, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my last company today, which you've heard a little bit about, but we're going to talk about that, and Emerson's going to chime in because he's heard a lot about my last business. Increase profits and revenues, attract better clients and team members if you need to grow a team this year, and you offer a unique experience and charge a premium. That is the keyword for today, charging premiums for your services. So these are why you should make your business hot, right? So we know the why, and what are some of the easiest ways to do this? So here are a few ways to do it, and Emerson, feel free to chime in at any point. Thank you. But, um, oh, did I miss a slide? Hold on a sec, guys. Oh, I did miss the slide. Okay, so uh, we, we start out why and now when. So when is your business hot enough? So you might be wondering, well, I do have a hot business or I'm, I'm on the right track. And if you think you're on the right track, then these are a few things that, you know, you might be on the right track. And I'll talk a little bit about that too as it relates to, you know, what we're doing here over at the Pitch Queen. So you've increased your risk. Emerson and I quit our jobs and we took a massive risk which you've increased risk to leave it and which also can create an increase in reward, also financial reward too, right? If you, if you wanna talk about and revisit calculating risk, calculated risk and intelligent risk, you can check out Coffee is for Closers episode number 23. That is uh, two weeks ago we did that. It was a really good episode. Lots of great stuff there. You guys can get the slides for free. Um, you know, you're not willing to deal with workload and stress anymore. So when your business is hot, you're kind of like cool with the stress. <laughs> you're like, I don't think so. Or you start saying no to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Do you say no to a lot of stuff these days? I say, I don't want to say I say no to things. I pass on opportunities that don't, that I don't see growing my business or I don't see as fully representing the value of which I think I've worked toward. So in a way, I say no. Right. But what I'm really just doing is saying yes to a bigger future. Oh, that's good. So how did you get to say, how did you get to the point where you could distinguish which things you should say no to and which things you see as getting to your future potential? Well, initially you have to know your value. And if no one else is going to know your value until you know your value. <clears throat> to start with, let's say you want to leave the job you're in. You've done your calculations. You're like, I'm going to make a calculated risk where I'm going to leave this steady paycheck, this 401k, this IRA in order to go out and maybe have tough times for a while, but in order to have a bigger and greater return. When you initially do that, no one else is going to see your value. They're going to see you as a person who maybe failed at another job, and is now trying something new that maybe they don't understand or can't comprehend if you know they don't have your passion or if they're totally comfortable in their lifestyle. So right off the bat, when no one else is valuing you, you have to give yourself a value premium. So when you walk in and you ask for something, as soon as you walk in the door, if you don't have the value already inside of you, people are gonna see that you don't have it inside of you and are not gonna give you what you're asked for. But if you already value what you feel you should be valued in the near future, people, other people are going to see that. Mm -hmm. They're going to they're going to they're going to feel that from you. They're going to they're going to get that 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 subconscious, I guess, I guess, emotion that you're projecting, that energy that you're projecting of um, what your perceived value is. And that's what it comes down to. So that's that's a start. So value yourself, value yourself. Mm -hmm. It bleeds me really nicely into the next thing, which is quality over quantity. Yes. And I think that's what you do in the services that you provide. You're going for the quality work versus the quantity of things. And I think a lot of us, and this is like my main point for mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. is focusing really on quality versus quantity. How did how were you able to make that shift? From well, first of all, you have to decide. Do you want to do 10 jobs for a dollar or do you want to do one job for $10? 
I decided I want to do one job for $10 and then with the remaining time in my day, do more of those jobs for $10 rather than filling them with $1 jobs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the return is greater. So just look at it from a mathematical point of view or a return point of view. You know, place value where it needs to be placed and, right. you know, shoot for, you know, once again, the calculated risk, but shoot for the bigger jobs than rather the smaller ones. Yep. Okay. And what about increasing your prices? So a lot of people here might have services like the CPAs we work with, right? All of, it's, an, it's an arbitrary amount of money that you charge to a client. And a lot of times, a lot of people that I've worked with, especially here, you know, for all of you guys that have been here for weeks now, you're dealing with, oh, well, someone down the street will do it for less. Yes. You know, the competition is rough. Yes. And how people. do you increase that value to where you're so confident that you keep your prices where they're at or even increase them? Well, people naturally look for relative value. People are going to try well, relative. Well, I think we don't want to conflate the word price with right. value. People look for relative price and assume that there's relative value. So people are like, oh, well, the person down the street is charging me X amount of dollars for the same service that you're charging me. But are they? Are they? They're charging you for the, the same amount of dollars or, or less amount of dollars or offering you less amount of dollars for what they say is the same service. So you have to express to a potential mm -hmm. company or a potential customer what your value is so they can see the relative value over the relative price and therefore be willing to pay a higher price or a premium because you offer a value premium. Oh, I love it. Relative value. We have not discussed relative value and relative mm -hmm. price. That was good, you guys. Okay. And another thing, when your business is really hot, it is, uh, you know, time to let clients go that don't serve you, right? Uh, time out. Emerson needs to get hydrated. I do too. So uh, Shin Yu's going to hook up some water. Thank you, Shin Yu. Thank you. Wait, don't walk yourself out. <laughs> don't walk yourself out. Water? I'm oh, good, thanks. Great. Okay. So um, real quick, back to what we were talking about. So when your business is hot, just in summary, you've increased your risk substantially. If you need a review, go back a couple episodes to calculated risk and intelligent risk, not willing to deal with more workload and stress. So it's not taking on more work. It's actually increasing the quality and letting some of that work go. So letting go of clients that serve you. This is a great time of year to really reflect and look at your client base and who you're working with and what, or maybe if you don't work with clients and you're pitching your products places, where are you really willing to let go of some things? And increasing your relative price and value, as Emerson gracefully said, and also increasing the quality of the clients and uh, reducing the quantity. <clears throat> Got it? Got yes. it. Yes, okay. So that is when your business is hot and some of the things that you guys might have experienced if it is hot. Now, if it's not so hot, Let's discuss a few things that might really be able to help you. Let's make it better. Yeah, we gotta make it better. So these are some easy ways to get hot. Um, if you are not online or not on social media, I'm so sorry to say, but it's probably time to get on it. You gotta do it, you gotta do it. I mean. Different businesses that need different things, but if you're in a service and service business or a sales business, you absolutely need to be on social media and not just on social media. Posting pictures of your cats and dogs isn't going to get your product sold unless you're selling cats and dogs. So you need to have very specific and tailored posts. And I'm sure Michelle will cover that in a later date, but specificity when it comes to social media is very important. Specificity is very important. We should cover that. We have not covered that yet. Future. Okay. So another way to have a really, really hot business is to ask for referrals. Uh, I would say that this is gold and a lot of people, like 80% of people actually miss the boat on this where it could help you get to that extra 20% of really amazing revenues that you're missing out on. Um, I know this one asked probably for a ton of referrals in the business that he's in. Always. 
and I'm always asking referrals too. And referrals is the easiest lead to get. It doesn't really cost you anything except maybe a referral fee or like a payment depending on what you're selling. Incentivize it. Incentivize it. Absolutely. And it also, um, it, all you have to do is like ask. All, it costs you your mouth. It costs yeah. you, all you have to do is just ask and get it out there. I mean, I'm gonna expand on that for a second, but just as a general point in business, you can always ask. It does not hurt to ask. Can I? I think so many people when they start business or, or so many people when they're in business are afraid to ask for things. What's it hurt? The worst thing that can happen is no. And guess what? If you're going to start a business or if you're going to go out and try to create something for yourself that the world is constantly pushing on you, trying to get you to stop doing because if anybody can do it, everybody would. Right. You're going to hear no all the time. So what's another no? What's another no? It's just one more thing that you hear on the way to yes. So, <laughs> hey, do you think tonight when you go out to dinner with your friends that you could tell them about the services that I provided you with here today? Uh, no, you know, it's kind of a family dinner. How about this? I'll make you a deal. For every person that comes away from that family dinner and gives me a call, I'll give you a discount on a future service. We're like, well, I mean, hey, that might save me a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. So what does it cost you? Because in the end, if you give that person 10% back of the services that you offer them, but in return, you get two or three more clients, that costs you 10% to get 300% more revenue. Yeah. That's and and let's say you're spending $100 a lead anyway, mm -hmm. depending on whatever marketing you're doing, 10% of whatever you're selling, that's probably a lot less than 100 to $300 on a lead that you're yeah. spending. Plus with an extra two, 300% additional revenue that you can get from that in the future. Maximize revenue, maximize opportunity. Don't be afraid to ask the question. Don't be afraid to ask the question. No, no one's ever going to hold it against you for asking a question that's coming from a place where, hey, I'm trying to increase and grow my business, most likely a business that is just you know, help you or, or a business that you've just purchased a service from. So it's obviously a business that you believe in. Yeah. So, totally. you know, and if you guys are in the email game and you're growing your email list and you're sending out a bunch of emails, make your subject lines catchier. I am actually working on this myself because you have to make it intriguing. So someone would even open your email. I don't think you send out emails, right? No, but when I do, it's like, oh my God, click here. Look what Mariah just did. <laughs> I hate that stuff. Mariah just did. <laughs> or whoever. <laughs> um, focus on your current clients. So your current client base or your current customer base is your foundation. And I think a lot of times you're always trying to get more and more clients. And actually, if you focus on your current base, they end up giving you more referrals. They are your foundation. And I would also look into, you know, I love the 80-20 principle. If you guys haven't read that book yet, check it out. It's really good. But 80% of your total revenue probably comes from your top 20% of your clients. Does that make sense? Makes sense right? to me. Makes sense to you guys? I don't know, but uh, hopefully it does. So again, really focusing on your current clients is very, very, very important. And uh, I'll bring up my last company, Fitzy Foods, for all of you guys that have forgotten about Fitzy. I know it's been dead for a few months now. Um, but I like to revisit the lessons I've learned because I had a lot and it was a very expensive MBA program. It's never dead. Never dead. <laughs> it's dead. The experiences will always the live inside. The experiences yeah. are living on so every the company, single day. The company might not exist in the form that you originally envisioned, but the experiences and what you take away from it and what you learn from it. <laughs> lives forever for it, better or worse it does live forever mm -hmm. but the company is dead yeah. so that's in the past and now we're just living with the experiences that carry mm -hmm. on move mm -hmm. on but i would say <clears throat> at my last company the top 80 uh 80 percent or top 20 percent of our total revenue came from like a handful of people mm -hmm. handful of people i mean 80 percent of our revenue I got it reversed. I'm so sorry. So there was like, let's say I had 100 clients. Okay, I'm going to break this down so this all makes a little bit more sense to you. I have 100 clients and I'm doing 100,000 in revenue. 80,000 of that revenue came from 20 clients. Does that make sense? Did I get it right? Mm -hmm. Got it right. 
that was the whole business. And I bet if you reflect on what you did in 2017, you're going to see something very similar. That there's a handful of people that you're working with, a handful of clients that generate the bulk of your revenue. Treat them like gold. They are your foundation. Shoot, I just went. Um, okay, next, create a great mental movie for your prospects. What? <laughs> you're going to like this one. Mental movie. Emerson can talk about this. So creating a great mental movie for your prospects, it's like, how are they going to remember you? How are you going to be different? What's your unique, your uniqueness? How are you creating added value? What What is that mental movie that these people are going to remember you of? I want, so here, I'll give you an example of me and then Emerson can give you his. My mental movie for you is that, oh my God, Michelle will try anything and teach me all these unique ways on how to sell and serve more people without being sleazy, without being pushy, without doing all this bad sales rep stuff that's been out there for years. And how can you grow your business even more without it, with it, with it feeling good? That is my mental movie that I'm trying to create and put onto you guys. That me, I want you to remember. Yeah, I started yours. out by watching everyone else's mental movie and <laughs> decided, that is exactly what I do not want to project. Not that it's a bad thing, but what I'm trying to do is differentiate myself and, and create a more unique experience or at least a different experience to help, you know, help people see me and my services in a different light. There you go. It's a value added proposition. Right. It's, a, it's a perspective of value. My mental movie is I want to leave people inspired about what services and what I can offer them. So not just leaving thinking, hey, this might be a good place to get what I want, but hey, this might be a good place to get what I want and it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be exciting. And even if I'm not gonna work with Emerson, he still makes me leave this process or go further along in this process, fun and excited about it. So it's more about leaving an impression. That, mm. That's my thing. I want people to leave like, that was, that was good. You know, I'm yeah. going to work with him or you know what? I'm not necessarily going to work with him because maybe he's not offering the exact same product I want, but I feel good leaving his office. I feel good leaving that meeting and I'm, I'm going to take that along with my day because down the road, they might find out that I do have a service that they need and that's going to circle back to me. So when they think back, okay, who has this thing in the, oh yeah, Emerson met him a long time ago. And I remember, I don't remember the him exactly. I don't remember everything we talked about, but I remember the way I felt. Yep. So that's what I try to do. I love that mental movie. Mm -hmm. So again, feeling or leaving someone feeling inspired and you know, they might not work with you now, but they might come around in the future. So what Don't be a jerk. What is your mental movie? That's what I want to know. So think about it. You've got a week to figure it out and maybe you can create a new mental movie for 2018. And uh, the last thing on another way to get your business hot is pick a niche or a sub niche within your niche. Okay. I was actually just talking to Emerson about this this morning and you all know I work with a lot of CPAs. I work with a lot of pro athletes and, uh, you know, really focusing on business owners slash entrepreneurs that sell high ticket items. So services between 3000 and like 30,000 either a month or annually. That is my sweet spot. So that's a sub niche within a niche of sales. So what is your sub niche? Maybe you need to dig a little bit deeper. So for 2018, I, uh, we've been talking about, you know, really helping not only all of you entrepreneurs, because this does help everybody, but really speaking to those that, you know, if you're selling something of 3000 to 30000 and you're really wanting to focus on quality versus quantity, here we are. I'm your gal, right? Go to the pitch queen. You're going to learn something new. So do you have a sub niche? Oh, uh, I mean, just in any business that I, I work in or I've created in the past, um, I create sub niches. And mm -hmm. I generally find that sub niches create themselves if you're listening to the customer. Yeah. So you might come into the business offering one service or one product, and then as you listen to the customer and really you know, process their needs when they come to you for your service, because um, generally, I mean, I, I find that 
it's it's far and few between businesses that give the customer 100% what they what they need. And it's not any fault of the business. It's like, this is what we offer. And it's usually feels about 80% requirement. If you can figure out what that other 20% is, and then create that a product or experience as an add on or an additional product, that's a sub niche in itself. So I, I think I think things like sub niches create themselves out of listening and connecting and, and, and really understanding what your customer or potential customer is asking for. Yes. Listening to your clients. Hello, Leon. It's great to see you. If you guys need a reminder, we are doing a giveaway for this hat. So you will need to pop over to Facebook. It's the pitch queen. Like the pitch queen, share this episode on your pages and comment as to, uh, what are some of your, you know, goals for 2018, but maybe what's your um, movie, you know, what's going to be your movie that you leave behind with your prospects and clients? What is your unique factor? And then also, like we're talking about, what is your sub niche within your niche? Who are you really uh, working with in 2018? And then, you know, are you going to go over quality or are you going for quantity? Which one are you focusing on? So again, put them in the comments below and you can enter to win and we'll do the giveaway next week for this hat, that hat that Emerson's wearing. Okay, so let's go over unique ways to make your business hotter because I do want to get to some of these other things and we keep talking a lot, but it's all good stuff. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Um, again, put comments, if you've got, or not comments, put questions in the comments below and we will get to them at the end. You can put comments in the comments below as well. <laughs> you can put comments, yes, you can. Okay, so unique ways to make your business hotter. I'm gonna list them and then I'm gonna ask Emerson if he's got any hot tips to provide to you, okay? So we can get through this list. For all of those of you on Instagram and you want these slides, just type in show in the comments below and if you're on Facebook show and they're gonna automatically come to you, like automatic, like that, snap of the fingers. Okay, now I'm really gonna get to what we're talking about. I keep saying things and I forget other things. So unique ways to make your business hotter. License or work with affiliates to sell your products. It's a great way to increase revenues. Um, participate and speak at trade shows and events within your sub niche. Again, it helps you increase your credibility, expertise, um, everything else that comes along with speaking <clears throat> and participating at trade shows or different events in LA, if you're in LA like Emerson. Diversify, create different revenue streams. So you can't have like all of your eggs in one basket. I do believe that a bulk of your revenue can come from the top 20% of your client base. It can generate 80% of the revenue. However, depending on what your business is, it could, uh, if you don't diversify, and we'll talk about diversification in a second, it could hurt you too in a big way if you lose a big client. So you can also sell products and services that are complementary to your main service that you're selling and also expand your market. So offers to new interest areas. Example, if your target audience um, are disabled and your, offer, and your offers, I have a spelling error, specials, specializes to disability programs. For example, show no towels, Shelly, she's the founder and she came on one of the Wednesday episodes of Success Unfiltered here and she had a towel for kids so they can change at the beach, right? And you can just put your head over it. And what she found is she put her business to sleep. She put on bed rest for a couple of years. And what she found is a lot of disabled families were looking for a way to help their kids get out of the shower. And so now she's making an adult version of this towel that she thought was going to be a big hit for kids where really it was more of an area for the disabled. So it was a really sub niche within an area that her product was a perfect solution to where she thought it was for kids, where it's great for kids in a smaller version, but then had a big towel, right? Um, real quick on diversifying revenue streams and then we'll get Emerson's input. But I wanna talk about my company that's been dead for six months. When we had a huge account, remember the vitamin shop? It was so huge that it ended up being a little over 50% of our revenue. And it was really great for about six months. And then all of a sudden when the test ended, we went back to where we were without that revenue. 
that we went from making money to losing a lot of money overnight. 10, 20, 30,000 a month loot losses. Yes, losses, right. So diversifying where nothing is, um, you know, that much of your revenue base can help your business, especially if you're product based, like my last business was. But if you're service based, you know, think about really how do you treat your quality clients with high end service? Well, I have an example as far okay, as give me diversifying an from a service perspective. I mean, it's, it's as simple as it sounds to, uh, to, you know, to think it up, but it's not as simple as it sounds to actually apply it, obviously, because it, in a way it's starting not a whole new business, but a somewhat different, but, but still homogenous entity. So for example, I sell services to the film and television industry. I diversified into the voiceover industry as well as into the commercial and animation industry. So if one particular, and, and I did this prior to any downturn, so if there was a situation where I lost a, a, a large client or we just didn't make a, a lot of revenue in the film and television standpoint, we always had revenue streams from the voiceover industry, from the animation and cartoon industry, and the commercial, uh, television commercial industry as well. So one, it obviously brought into revenue stream, but two, it also gives you a sense of security that if there is a downturn in a particular segment of your business, that your business won't have to collapse if you lose one or two big clients. Yes. So we have a few examples for you. That was a great one. And I want to go into something else that you were talking about earlier, which is um, how to sweeten up. Oh, here we go how to sweeten up your sales revenues. So you might be thinking, well, like what are some other things that I can do? So you might not be like Emerson where you can offer voiceover work and do commercial work and do this other work, but that's the way in his industry. So for your industry, there might be ways to do bundle and add on services or products, right? Or the affiliate. There might be subscription options. So as working with um, a brick and mortar business, and they're a very high-end boutique gym with group training classes, and there's an option to offer a subscription add-on for nutrition, as just an example. High-ticket offers. If you guys have been playing in the $300 to $600 price ranges for your monthly services, what if you just worked with, instead of 100 people at that price, maybe you work with 10 people at 20000 or 30000 <laughs> His eyes light up. <laughs> Mine do too. Um, have a limited time offer. Maybe there's like a, a promotion you wanted to test out. Uh, you know, maybe it was a subscription model. Maybe it was a monthly service. Maybe it was, um, you have to really think about it for your industry. But if you have a question, just let me know and I'll answer it later. And raise your prices. What's your value? What's your worth? So Emerson touched on that in the beginning. You know, I talk about this all the time and I'm going to remind you every single week. However, if you feel that you've been struggling to grow your top line revenues, which is sales revenues, top line growth, whatever you want to call it, if you're not priced right, or what do we call it? Relative, mm -hmm. relative price. Uh, that might be an area that all, that's the only thing you really need to do this year. Anything on that? You're doing great. Okay, doing great. Emerson's like, nope, I don't have any comments on that topic. <laughs> so again, if you guys want these slides, type in show in the comments below and we will send you the link to them. Um, just make sure you also do it on Facebook. And if you want this hat, I'm doing a giveaway. All you have to do is pop on over to Facebook and uh, just like the show, share it, and put a comment below. So I want to just end it real quick. I know it's not real quick. We're going into OT. But we get to go yeah. over to OT because Emerson's here. So yeah. uh, there is a difference between growing your business and growing your sales revenue. So I want to talk about this. A okay. very important differentiator. Educate okay? me, Professor. <laughs> okay. Perks of growth in business. So pay attention, guys. 
Uh, for those of you on Facebook, the slides are here. If you're on Instagram, you can't see them, but that's cool. Just pop on over to my Facebook page, The Pitch Queen. I'm going to run through these, and then Emerson's going to pay really, really close attention and give you his opinion on it from Professor Pitch Queen. Growth concentrates on expansion and experimentation at the expense of near-term profitability. Okay? Pay attention, because I'm going to give you an example of how you can get to be SOL without doing it the right way. Um, you have huge returns in the long run, not now. Makes you highly competitive and focus concentrates on users, users meaning clients, customers now, and monetizing strategies down the line. Growing into new markets is crucial if you hope to move beyond the startup stage and your business is considered to be primarily concerned with market share first and cash second. All of that roughly translates to, it's gonna cost you money and time <laughs> that you're not gonna get right back. So. However, <laughs> in the future, your returns will be greater. Right, so with my last company, Fitzy Foods, that is now dead, okay? We were going with a growth-minded business model where we would take losses in the short term to gain a really high return in the long term, which means you have to be proper, properly capitalized with enough cash flow funding to fund your cash flows through the times where you're not making any money. Well, we ran out of money. And if you don't have a backup plan to your backup plan for money, then you don't have your uh, business anymore. So that's what happens with a growth business model. I am now in a growth revenue model, just like Emerson, and just like I think a lot of you. So that's really what I wanna focus on. But if you have a product-based business, like I have a few friends that, um, I'm not gonna mention any names, but they have a product, right? And you have to make a significant amount of inventory for your product. If you go and listen to all of the Wednesday episodes, you will hear about half the people with product-based businesses. They're running out of money. They're out of stock on a lot of inventory at times because you have to buy this inventory up front. So you might outlay 100, 200,000 in money that you're not gonna see the return of revenue on that money for three, six, nine months sometimes. In a service-based business, like what we're in right now, we don't have that problem. So a lot of you guys, maybe there's a service, if you do have a product-based business that you can, um, add-on okay but there are marketing cost outlays there are marketing cost outlays mm -hmm. yes and time right I'm here if you look at this uh, show that we do every single week this is a marketing cost but thanks to all of the platforms the money isn't a big outlay it's the time but I love doing it I love being here with you guys so <laughs> and I get to wear really fun hats and ears and all these other cool things. So perks of growth in revenue. Revenue usually refers to funds received now for the sale or goods of service. Now, and I really wanna stress the now for all of you guys that send out invoices and get paid in the future, I highly recommend you stop that and you actually invoice ahead of time for your service, get paid before the service is even delivered. In a service-based business, you can do that. You should be getting paid up front, okay? Your business is safer because you have more money and the focus is on creating a model for profitability. Yes. Your investors are happy. That's if you have investors. A lot of you might not have investors. In a service-based business, you typically don't really need a whole lot of investors. Uh, your cash flow is more stable and you got more money in the bank. Yes. And your revenue-focused business are... Are, mo are more focused on earning money than ra earning money rather than the quick expansion. Mm -hmm. So with my last company, it was all about a quick expansion. And you, if you have a quick expansion and you have mistakes, it costs a lot of money. And then it goes dead, and you have to bury it. It helps make sure your business doesn't grow too fast. So when you're focused on revenue and you're focused on profitability, you're also more focused on a slow, steady growth versus you know, what you guys have seen probably with like Uber and all Tesla and all these other big giants um, in my space, in not my space, in my previous business industry, 
I would say the big the guys that raised. Uh, I saw just recently Daily Harvest. They have a really cool business where they send you like frozen cups of smoothies and other fun things, mm -hmm. and they got forty three million dollars. But the amount of cash they're burning through every month is so big that they're focused on growth and business. Or like uh, Justin's, you know, uh, he was on a Wednesday episode with Justin's peanut butter and peanut butter cups and everything else. I mean, the amount of money he had to raise was crazy, but he got acquired. So that is the focus of a growth in business versus the growth in revenue. Anything on that, Emerson? You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Professor Pitch Queen is yeah, doing Professor great. Professor Pitch Queen okay. is doing great. It's just good to recognize <laughs> the difference between the two and what you're trying to accomplish. It's, 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 it's very, very good important. If you don't recognize it, you could find yourself just outlying money and resources trying to grow your business without any particular goal inside except for the act of growing your business. Um, and that's a dangerous trap that a lot of people get into. Those people who are rapidly growing their business and going into, going into deficits and stuff to do such are generally doing so to acquire greater investment, greater partners based on the size and the increasing scale of their business or to sell their business. It's not necessarily a sustainable model in order if you just want to continue and grow your to slowly grow your business um in a way you're overextending yourself in order to to incentivize people to come in and give you a lifeline correct it's a very it's a risky model it's a it's like walking on a tight rope it's walking on a tight rope and in, and there are certain businesses um that will, you'll never have someone come in and and rescue you because it's it's not that type of transferable thing it's it might not be that type of transferable idea yeah. um so be careful when you do want to grow and make sure you're growing in the right way uh, with the right methodology. You've grown your business with no investment, right? I have grown my business with zero outside investment. I am growing my new business, the Pitch Queen, with zero, yeah. no outside investment. We were, we, were def we were focused on revenue growth. Yes. And so what we were trying to do was basically increase the quality of our customers and increase the number of our customers disproportionately to the amount of, of, of marketing costs we were trying to incur, where we were outlaying our marketing costs, but we wanted a, a, a larger return on our customer for a lower percentage of marketing. So yep. it was part of a, a larger strategic plan to do that, where before, let's say it costs 10 you know, cents per marketing dollar per customer, we were willing to spend you know, 10 times that but we weren't looking for the same 10 times return. We were looking for a 20x return, but that you have to strategize that out or you just end up spending, you know, 100 <laughs> times more and getting nothing back. And that's a recipe for disaster. You have to, what is it, plan to fail or you're going to fail to plan, right? Isn't that how it goes? Fail to plan, plan to fail. Say it again. How does it go? What's how does it go? Whatever. Just, yeah. Pretend I didn't say that, guys. <laughs> okay. I know this is, uh, yeah. Okay. So um, that's all I've got for you guys today. So I would like to know, what are you going to focus on? I think what she was trying to say. If you fail to plan, you need a plan to fail. That's what I was trying to say. I just want to let you squirm a little. <laughs> that's not what guests do. <laughs> okay. So what are you going to focus on in 2018? I've got some ideas here. You've got about a week to figure it out. Maybe you've already thought it out. Maybe you needed some ideas. So hopefully this has inspired you with some new ideas. But are you going to focus on growth in business or are you going to focus on revenue growth? Which one? I'm going to focus on revenue growth. Me? Definitely revenue growth. Okay. What is your mental movie that you are providing to your prospects and future clients and current clients? What is that mental movie that you want them to remember you about? For right? me, I want them to leave inspired. Leave inspired. I also want you to leave inspired, but my main movie that I want you to do is take action. I want you to take action every time we see each other, hear each other, whatever, just like take action on one thing. Because if we don't take action, we can't ever have any revenue growth. And what is your sub niche? 
So again, what you've got your niche that you're helping, but maybe like what is it your sub niche? So like with all of the CPAs that I work with, everyone's a CPA, but the sub niche that we're working with are people that want to have a high level tax plans and be high level tax planners for their clients to save them the most amount of money possible. So it's kind of like a dentist and then there's a root canal expert, a root canal dentist where their sub niche is doing root canals in the field of dentistry. Our sub niche, our niche is providing service to the entertainment industry, but our sub niche is high uh, net worth clients that are generally making uh, 10 to $100 million productions. There you have it. And revenue streams. Are you going to add any? Are you staying where you are? Are you going to have subscriptions? Are you going to have add-ons? Um, for me, I am going to create a revenue stream that is evergreen and that's ongoing for you know most of the CPAs here watching and listening to help you really focus on your top line sales and how to grow your revenues anything for you you've been amazing what more could I add <laughs> all right you guys well that is it for me I hope you liked our facelift <laughs> Our slides did have a facelift. I am very honored for you guys to hang out this long. I know we went way into overtime, but uh, if you want to join others in the royal family, feel free to join over at the Pitch Queen on all platforms. You can hashtag the Pitch Queen and hashtag Coffee is for Closers if you'd like to find it on all platforms. I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing week. A happy new year. Guess what? I will see you the day after New Year's. So thank you all so much for being here. It was an honor. And thank you, Emerson, for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>